F F L C Podcast. Welcome back to the SFLC Podcast. I am Ryan Sprague. I want to thank everybody for tuning in, hitting that like and that download button on iTunes and Stitcher, Podomatic, checking us out on MyMMANews.com. Always a pleasure. But right now, we are joined back on the SFLC Podcast via the magic of Skype with one of the big winners uh, coming off of his impressive victory at Bellator 202, a first round technical knockout over Ryan Walker. Welcome back to the show, Steve Thunderbeast Kazola. Steve, how are we doing uh, a little bit after your fight here? Uh, feeling amazing, man. Um, it's indescribable how amazing it was to get back in the win column. I love being back in Southern California. I love where I live, man. I love my family, my uh, amazing wife, uh, my son, you know, all my family members and my teammates that helped me through this whole thing. You know, it's been a rough, uh, it's been a rough couple of fights, man. And to come back with a big win and make a statement that, you know, I just had some lessons to learn. I had some growing up to do as a fighter. I'm still here. I'm still dangerous. I'm still, you know, worthy to be you know, noted as one of the best fighters out there. And then uh, I went out there and I demonstrated. Uh, demonstrated and I was very happy with uh, my performance I was very happy with my team um, and I, I just couldn't be happier man I'm very happy with the result and just super blessed super thankful before we actually talk about the fight with Walker I should mention in the interest of full disclosure that I had looked at you being on this fight card in 202 and the last time that I had been at Bellator was in Chicago and we know that you were looking at being on that Chicago card, but I had heard that you had been released from Bellator after your loss to Jake Smith, and then were brought back on. How was that getting on to this card in LA after your loss against Jake Smith? Man, um, it was a rough period, you know, because uh, Bellator you know, released me and, uh, that was, that was a hard pill to swallow. I mean, I, I know I had two losses, and they were two bad losses. I mean, I got decisioned by Carrington Banks in, uh, in a way that he even 10 aided me two rounds. Um, and then I come back, and, you know, Belter is a great thing. It gives me a big opportunity to fight at Pachanga, which is basically a hometown fight because I live in Southern California. I train at, you know, Dan Henderson, which is in Temecula. You know, and that's where Pachanga is in, in, you know, in Temecula. And, I had a chance to show something, be on the main card, and lead it off again. So they gave me another great opportunity, and then you know I get knocked out in the first round, and you know under a minute, it's just like, oh man, you, you hit some low points, you low to the low, and then you know they release you, and then you know that really sucks. But um, my manager Tiki is an amazing manager. He's an amazing man. He's like, listen, you know I'm going to do everything in my power to you know get you this fight back because I think you deserve. It. I think we can show the world who you are. And, you know, thank God uh, for Tiki. Thank, you know, you know, thank you so much for Bellator for listening and giving me this opportunity again because they definitely didn't have to. But they did. They honored that last time my contract, which I can't be more thankful for because it gave me this amazing opportunity to show, like, hey, I'm still here. I'm still relevant. I just had some growing up to do as a fighter and, and as a you know, person. And, uh, you know, to go out and uh, demonstrate that, to be, show patience, show confidence, show tenacity, show that I can finish the fight and, uh, you know, didn't even show that much. You know, it was really just boxing again. And I got so much more in my arsenal. I am more, you know, more Thai certified. I can get down and show great wrestling and show great grappling and jujitsu. I have improved so much as an overall fighter. And you just saw, you know, 10% of what I've been working on. I can't wait to show even more. So I'm anxious to uh, get back in there. I hope I get back in there for Bellator again because I would love to be, you know, part of their growing company. And just uh, hope, hopefully they want to get behind me and I want to get behind them. And let's make this happen. It wasn't a long layoff. We're looking at your fight against Jake Smith at the end of January, and then you turn around and you're fighting Bellator in July. Obviously, you missed that Chicago card that I know that you were dying to be on, uh, but it, it was almost like an extra couple of months to prepare. So what was going through your mind in that six months, you know, other than you said it was a low point? How did you kind of pull yourself back up? 
we just had to evaluate what was going on in my life, my life as a man, my life as a fighter, my life as a businessman, as a worker, you know, because uh, I'm not just a 100% full-time fighter. I also have to uh, have a job where I am a you know, strength and conditioning coach or I am a personal trainer. And, you know, uh, I was holding a management, uh, management position my last uh, couple fights, and that was a lot of responsibility. And it was something that... Um, I didn't realize it took so much of my time away. You know, I was commuting a lot to go back and forth up to Huntington Beach, you know, four or five times a week. I was having to spend too much time, you know, worrying about my job as opposed to just worrying about being a fighter. You know, when you're just a coach, you just get to teach your classes, you have your clients, you know, it's all good. But when you go up to that manager position, naturally more pressure because you naturally just have more responsibility. And uh, so that responsibility on top of my additional commuting time and, everything like that. It, I just didn't realize how much I had up and took my focus away being a fighter. So I corrected those mistakes. I, you know, stepped down from my management position, just became a coach again. Just was like, Hey, I got, you know, my classes, I got my clients, keep it simple that way. Um, didn't commute as much. was only commuting like, you know, one or two days a week as opposed to four to five. Um, just got back right mentally, you know, spiritually and physically with just with my schedule and focusing on being a fighter as much as I possibly could while also making ends meet financially for my family. And, uh, I found that formula. I, you know, just found my good schedule with my training camp and felt better than ever, more focused than ever, more fierce than ever walking in there. And, uh, you know, the results showed. So super thankful, super blessed. It's interesting that you mentioned that because, you know, that was, that was a topic of discussion uh, with Brendan Schaub in Showtime talking about what the fighters make and how they survive as fighters. And then you bring this up and having to constantly balance being a professional fighter while also being able to provide financially for your family. Man, you, you showed the struggle of that. Where do, you, where do you find that balance? It's hard, man, because, you know, I got to give a shout out to my wife right now. Ashley Cazola, like, she's everything. She's the one that holds it down. Like, she's the one that's putting in that, you know, 40 hours plus, 40, you know, 50 hours plus a week, you know, working. And, uh, you know, when when money was low, she was bonusing at her job, like a stud. You know, like, if it wasn't for her, like, I'd already be out in the street, man. Like, I couldn't do it without my wife. Like, you know, we, we have these moments of great, you know, you know, victories where we win fights and we get a nice paycheck and it's awesome. You know, it's amazing. But otherwise, I got to, you know, still work as much as I need to work to bring in something to help contribute to the house, although we're not going to be able to make it, especially living in Southern California. You know, it's, it's expensive to live here. It ain't cheap, you know what I mean? And uh, we just try to get it as simple as possible, and that's what we had to do, man. We, we you know, actually took a step back, and we're like, hey, let's find, like, a, a little bit of a cheaper place. We're not worrying about rent as much. You know, let's get back to, you know, it's just the three of us. You know, what do we need? Like, what's enough? What's more than enough? Like, what do we need? So we took a step back and got a smaller place, and I moved right before this fight. Like, literally a week before this fight, we were moving into a smaller apartment just to, you know, manage better financially and everything like that for everyone. And, you know, and it ended up being a great decision because, you know, home is where you make it. And, our, you know, this is exactly where we need to be right now in our lives. And then they come up with a big win. And, you know, I got some momentum behind me again. So, again, it went from really low. Like, oh, man, like, we got to win this fight. We're in a smaller place now. We're doing everything we can to make sure we're making ends meet. So, okay, we got a big win. Let's hopefully, you know, let's, let's make a great deal with Bellator, let's re-sign with them, and, you know, let's get on track. And, you know, things can turn around in, in a day, and we know that now. And it absolutely did with that victory, that first round, like you said, TKO against Ryan Walker. Explain that to me. Walking into the ring, you know that, or the cage, rather, you know that this is in the back of your mind. Did you shut that off, or did that add any extra pressure to you? It naturally added extra pressure, um, but you did your best to just stay focused. I knew if I just kept it simple in my head that everything else would fall into place. And so keeping it simple was what you got to focus on right now. Beat that man in front of you. You beat that man, everything else goes away. Beat that man, and everything else goes away. You train to beat that man, expect to win. You go in there and show who the veteran fighter is you know, in the organization. Go in there and set the pace, control the setup and come out with a victory for your family. You know, like, that's what, I think mean, that's all it was. And it was just laser focus. It was just direct, right on the mission, right on the task, go into the kill. You know, but stay patient. And just, that's why I was like, just taking my time, picking my shots. I saw I was able to hurt him. I saw that I was faster right off the get. And 
you know, who ended up working out for me. And I was just so happy to get a win for my family and for my team. Like they deserve it because of how much they've invested into me, how much they've, you know, sacrificed. You know, everyone rides this roller coaster. It's not just me. It's my team. It's my family. And they ride it with us. So when I get a win like that, like we all win. And they deserve that win just as much, not more than I did. So you extend in this particular stretch with Bellator. You are two and two. I believe you're four and two overall in Bellator. With the contract expiring after that last fight, where do you see your next step being? Do you see it still maintaining with Bellator? Or do you look at it at this point and say, okay, my fight contract is over. I need to look at the possibility of other opportunities should Bellator not pick up the phone? You know, right now, I have such a great relationship with Bellator that that's all I'm focused on right now. Like, I want to make things good with them. Uh, they have given they're the first ones to give me my opportunity in a major organization. They, uh, you know, even after releasing me, they, uh, which hurt at first, they brought me back, which, again, I'm super thankful for. So that they showed that, like, hey, we believe in you, too. You know what I mean? So there's no reason for me to look anywhere else right now. It's, hey, Bellator, let's make this happen. Let's make, you know, let's make it let's make sense for both of us let's make it a win-win and let's go in there and you know make a statement that this was the right decision for you and that's what i want to do i want to get in there again as quickly as possible i want to show bellator you know gratitude and you know just thank like hey thank you for choosing me again and i'm going to show you why and go in there and finish the fight and you know that's what i wish i do is go in there and finish the fight out of my uh six fights i've won four of them and all four were knockouts and three of them were in the first round and then in my losses i had a big lesson you know i only went to the decision once which was uh you know, uneventful decision, you know, but I didn't get hurt, didn't receive damage in Carrington Banks. And then, you know, it was one of those kill or be killed moments that I, you know, took a lesson from and Jake Smith. So, but those are lessons I think you need to take in the sport to grow and to have a mature mindset about it. And I think I've really reached that and shown that. And I'm ready to show, I'm ready to take on, you know, some of the best guys in the world. At both 45 or 55, you know, there's a fight that makes sense too. Like, I, you know, I want to do either one. Now, we look at the concept of you ended up fighting – Early July, most fighters tend to fight, what, three to four times a year. So based on what we see right now, to fight for Bellator again, your options really are to fight at the end of September at Bellator 206 in San Jose, which I'm sure you'd prefer because, again, that's right around your backyard. Or you have October 12th, Bellator 207 in Connecticut. Would you be will, able to fight either of those? Is there one that you prefer over the other? Um, you know, right now I'm open to the discussion. You know, right now I just want to focus on my two and a half week vacation in the Bahamas with my family. Um, you know, my Tiki, uh, my manager Tiki is a very smart uh, man in terms of you know strategizing what he thinks is best for me and my career. So I'm gonna let Tiki and Bellator talk and. You know, figure out what, what, as far as like a timeline makes sense for both of us. And I got, um, I got some small things that need to heal up from the fight. I, uh, you know, I hit my hands. I'm pretty good. My hands are not broken, thank God. But my hands do need to heal up and uh, just get better, which will be fine. And uh, you know, I'll, I'll soak it in a nice salt bath in the Bahamas for two and a half weeks and come back ready to get back to training slowly uh, but surely and you know, very tactically. So I come in at 100. percent So. You know, if those dates make sense with me just needing to heal up a little bit naturally and uh, getting a good training camp in, then, hey, those make sense. But if they don't, we need to push it back, then we'll figure that out as well. You know, I'll let uh, Tiki and Bellator talk, and uh, we'll make good business happen, and we'll put on great shows for the fans in the future, and that's what I'm looking forward to the most. The well, last time we saw you in Chicago, you seemingly had won that night by getting able to call out one Dylan Dennis. Was there a lesson that you think that you learned by not calling out fighters, maybe being a little bit more uh, receptive of just kick back and let everything else fall into place? There's both, you know. Um, I think if you want to fight someone, you should let me know that you want to fight someone. You know, uh, I don't think there's any shame or wrong in that and wanting to let someone know you want to fight them. Um, at the same time, you, you know, it, there are other things like just, trying to call your shot too much, which I understand too. You're just kind of, hey, be a businessman, just take what they give you, be thankful for that. So again, I see both sides. It's really just how you want to play. Like, I'm not going to call someone out just for the sake of calling someone out. You know what I mean? Like, I called out Dylan at that time because I truly believed that he was being fake and that he didn't earn what he was given in terms of this, 
you know, uh, you know how much he's getting paid being an MMA fighter when he hasn't fought an MMA fight yet and all this stuff. I thought that he should have climbed some ladders first and, you know, but that's who am I to, who am I to judge. That's his life. That's his journey. And, uh, you know, good for him. He got into a major organization and he actually had a great first fight. He came back after getting hit. He did an impressive submission and, you know, that's great. And really right now, I don't, I don't, Dylan, Dylan doesn't want to fight me. I wouldn't want to fight me if I was Dylan, so I'm too experienced, I'm too fast, I'm too well, like, I'm too well-rounded for, like, we're, like, the level he's at right now, and, and plus, he's at a weight that I don't even think that we could agree on. Like, I mean, he was at 175, you know, fighting at a catch weight, which means, like, he couldn't fight at 170 yet, you know, or would have a hard time making 170, and I'm at, like, 55, about to go down to 45, so the weight wouldn't make sense right now either. I mean, that's just the guy who I like to fight, just to kind of be like, you know, you know humble yourself a little bit, be a little bit more chill, but... I just don't see it really, like, practically happening right now or in the near, uh, near future. So I'm just going to, you know, let Bellator decide, and Bellator and the manager decide where to put me in what weight class, whether it's 45 max, 55 max, if the matchup makes sense. I'm ready to go for whoever and show that I'm here to stay. Do you have anyone in mind that you'd like to fight for your next fight? No, I really don't. Um, you know, I think there's a lot of exciting matchups for, both, for me at both 55 um, I think there's exciting matchups for me at 45. I think there's even guys at either weight class that'd be, you know, willing to fight at a catch rate of 150 to see how much I like, you know, fighting down a little bit. So, I, you know, that's, that's what's great about Bellator is like they don't mind doing catch weight fights too. You know, like, hey, like, you know, what if there's a guy from 45 who, you know, wants to come up a little bit, you know, we can meet in the middle of 15 and see how we like it. You know, that, I think that's really cool that we can maybe do something like that. Or, you know, maybe there's another fight at 55 that makes sense. Like, it's just a good matchup. It just, it's just a fun fight I think I could, you know, do well in. Maybe that. Or there's a, like, hey, let's test yourself at 45. Here's a good matchup for you that puts you in a good spot in the division. You know, all those things make sense. And uh, we'll definitely find out uh, something in the near future, which I'm excited about. Well, you were able to get that last fight on your contract. And you kind of, if nothing else, went out with a bang. So you're getting ready to go on vacation. Obviously, I'm not going to keep you too much longer. We've had you on before. You know the drill, Steve. All your sponsors, where we can find you on social media. We always look forward to catching you and seeing what's next in your horizon. Yeah, well, I appreciate that. Well, first of all, Ryan, thank you again for having me uh, on the show. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. Um, thank you to all my teammates and uh, my family, you know, my team, Huntington Beach Ultimate Training Center. Dan Henderson, Death Life Fitness Center, 10th Planet Oceanside. Thank you so much to my, my sponsors, Purist Labs, SoCal Fresh Prep, Quality Environmental, Monster, Clinch here. I mean, these are the people that help me and my family uh, stay afloat and support us you know, no matter what. Thank you to my manager, Tiki, for you know being the best. And you know he's a great coach. My brother, Alex, for always being by my side. Again, my wife, Ashley, she's my queen. She's my everything. You know, my, you know, my family, my team. That's what it's all about. Proud to be an American. You know, God bless everyone. And uh, hell yeah, I'm the happiest person in the world right now. Let's go, champ. <laughs> Appreciate Steve Kozoa for taking his time with us. Stay tuned, everybody. When we come back, we will have American Top Team Strength and Conditioning Coach Phil Deru joining us on the SFLC podcast.